preamble to con the Convention of Genocide approved by the General Assembly of the United Nations in December 1948 describes genocide as an odious scourge which has inflicted great losses of humanity in all periods of history. Although the General Assembly of the United Nations asserted this definition in the 20th century, the concept of great losses of humanity through actions directed at unique populations has endured since the beginning of organized social groups. The action of genocide is not limited to those of little sophistication in ideas and technologies. The royalty of the Renaissance, especially monarchs, commissioned the killings of hundreds of peoples who religious views differed from their own. The war practices of civilized people in the Middle Ages were often marked by genocidal massacre. According to Cramer's definition of genocide, Mary Tudor's persecution of English Protestants falls more within the lines of micro-genocide. At the time of her reign, Protestants were not necessarily considered a minority. After the zealous Protestant reign of her predecessor, Edward VI, Protestantism was a strong and practicing religion amongst the English people. It is unclear then whether Mary Tudor met all of Cranmer's components of genocide. The mercy Mary displayed, according to historian Freud, may cast her as simply a woman ruler unsure of power and easily led by Catholic advisors. Neither Mary nor Cardinal Reginald Pole had expected to burn so many. They wanted heretics to be reconciled rather than die for the burnings to be carried out judiciously and without vindictiveness. However, the argument could still be made that she knew how many people were perishing as she herself had to sign the death warrants of all those burnt at the stake. She also ordered that the counts, a council be present to supervise each burning in London and that during each execution. Almost all those burned during the Marian persecutions of Protestants were recorded and identified in John Fox's massive work, familiarly known as his Book of Martyrs. He detail, his detailed account of the sufferings of Marian martyrs has ensured that all subsequent gen generations have known in detail about the horrors of their deaths. Catherine is often described as a murderous poisoner who would be responsible for the slaughter of even genitals in the St. Bartholomew's, Bartholomew's Day Massacre. The results of the St. Bartholomew's Day Massacre was more closely aligned to genocide than that of Mary Tudor's disastrous reign as England's first female monarch. The slaughter of 20,000 people from a particular religious group meets part of the criteria for genocide. The French government launched the cycle of mass murders, which also corresponds with defining elements of genocide. According to many sources, Queen Catherine de' Medici urged her son Charles in a meeting lasting for several hours to have Colony and his Protestant accomplices murdered. Charles gave his consent and told his mother, kill them all so that no, none will be left to reproach me for it. This quote signifies that the French government wanted to eliminate an entire group of people, the French Protestants. The Huguenots who were gaining power in France. Mary I's actions legitimized historically the ability for a monarch to launch persecution against a specific minority without limiting the numbers of victims who could be sacrificed. Therefore, the St. Bartholomew's Day Massacre was not an isolated widespread program of extinction, but instead an extension of Mary I's persecution of Protestants. Catherine's campaign widened the scope of royal European religious oppression and polarized a larger population of reformers and fundamentalists. Mary I understood herself as simply a religious reformer, but she actually refined a blueprint for non-monarch sanctions of genocide. Microgenocide may seem local, but its practice can legitimize legal persecutions of a larger scope. Henry VIII's execution of approximately 200 English citizens in relation to religious hostilities created a model for his daughter, Mary I, in defying and justifying her microgenocide against the English reformers. This ensured that the French monarchy's slaughter of the Huguenots was arguably an legally justified initiative rather than an aberration of human justice. 
the French genocide against a clearly defined segment of the population due to divergences in religious convictions raised persecution to a full genocidal scale of operations. It first started on start of St. Bartholomew's Day, and that was about uh, 3,000 um, massacre, uh, I mean, people who, who died. And then it did precipitate into smaller villages right outside Paris, and that was uh, about 20,000. So. so. So my question is, does it still, do you still call it genocide when the king, I, when the king is there to say, well, stop, we, we don't want to do this anymore? Um, uh, you know what the problem is, is I haven't been able to figure out what Catherine de' Medici's role is in it, because she was actually just ruling that she was nasty. <laughs> Her, she was actually ruling in her son, so if she was the monarch or the government at the time, then I would still constitute that as genocide, even though the king, who was a minority, said, stop, stop. So, I mean, that's up, up for debate, too, you know.